ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Her Excellency Kersti Kasulid, former president of Estonia. Hi all. I come indeed from Estonia. You know what? To this day, Estonia is the only society in our world you could call totally digitally transformed. Why? Because Estonian government offers all its services online, almost 100%. The only thing you cannot do online is getting married. But this is not a technical difficulty. We have chosen to be, it to be this way. You have to show up to your own marriage. Contrary to that, when you have a baby, you don't have to go to the village office to register the birth. Because, of course, when a baby is born in Estonia, in e-health registry, the doctor makes an introduction for a baby boy or a baby girl, three kilos, 50 centimeters. And in the background, nobody puts any, pushes any buttons even. In the background, the baby gets its digital ID. And now the parents will log on and name the baby online from your hospital bed or from the quiet place in your home. You simply do it. You don't have to go to the crowded place and catch any diseases. Catching diseases is a big risk for babies. Nowadays, even grown-ups understand it. Estonian mothers don't understand why globally, elsewhere, people have to go somewhere with newborns to register their births. And the same applies to all services which the government offers. You realize you have passed a certain line when something goes wrong and it doesn't function for a while. A couple of years ago, we had a hiccup in our system caused by a chip maker. I will not name it, but it was one of the biggest global chip makers. And the Estonians almost had a riot. Some of them had to go to a government office to renew their digital IDs. Nobody knows where are the government offices in Estonia. And some people, shock and horror, had to wait for 30 minutes to get their new digital ID up and running. And then we realized, yes, indeed, Estonia, while it is home for seven unicorn companies by now, is a small economy. It doesn't have digital behemoths in private sector. But the societal change depends on what the government really does. And if the government has, for a generation, offered everything online, services online, in the best practice format of private sector, this really changes the society. Why? Because it's inclusive. It's inclusive, everybody in the society, young people, grown-ups, elderly, they are all involved. They all together in this. How this happens? Well, 30 years ago, when Estonia regained its independence, private sectors were all digitalizing already. And what we did, we thought the governments globally will do very quickly. To this day, we are astonished that they really didn't. We are even more astonished that people think that uh, it is safer to carry around papers with sensitive private data and leave it in the offices, in the files, for who knows, to read. Digital is much safer. Estonian government has promised to our people that each and every time somebody looks at any file the government has on a citizen in an office, there will be a digital fingerprint. And we can see these fingerprints and we can query. And if we think this was not necessary for a government official to look at my data, then the government sues these people, takes them really to the court, because they were nosing around in the system, in the data, which they were not supposed to do. Of course, nobody in any government office has access to one person's whole data set, because this data set doesn't exist. It's in different various databases, and only a person, himself or herself, can aggregate everything which concerns them. But yes, if you work in tax board, for example, you have access, technically, to the tax file of your, let's say, old boyfriend's new girlfriend or vice versa. 
Some people initially felt the urge to look, but you know, they very quickly learned that that will be seriously a fine for such an action. Why I'm telling you this? Because this is the biggest, most important element of trust between Estonian society and the government. The government has promised they will not use this data themselves or allow civil servants to use this data, not to the benefit of the citizen, but to uh, another benefit. Be it government, be it just, I mean, being curious, it is not allowed. This is in the legal text. There is another corner point of our digital system, and that's the digital identity. Actually, it's amazing how few people in nowadays world, when we all act and transact online, probably spend 30 to 50% of our money online, how few people have access to a government guaranteed, legally accepted and legally protected digital ID. There should be one for every citizen globally. In Europe, there is. In European Union, there has been a decision, and I believe Estonia has been a catalyzing element in this process to achieve it. 20 years after we had our digital ID, European Union took a decision that every European citizen, all 400 million, has a right to digital ID, and they have to interoperate across the European borders because the European Union is a single market. But it took 20 years to achieve this, and many people, even in the rich world, to this day, have to be anonymous online and have to act and transact using nicknames, passwords, and all these systems created by private sector, they all lack, by definition, one important element. These kind of IDs, which are not government guaranteed, supported and developed, they do not have the legal framework which really makes them safe. Because no technology alone is safe, there has to be a legal space surrounding it, which is permissive for the technology development. But at the same time, which also makes sure that nobody can present themselves who they are really not. In Estonian system, if I log on and buy, let's say, a pack of solar cells for my own rooftop, and I buy it from an Estonian company who sends me the contract, on, uh, on our e-system, we are encrypted from end to end, which means that, no, I'm not getting from Google or Amazon endless advertisements to buy more solar cells thereafter. It's fully encrypted, government-protected digital ecosystem. And it has changed our society. It has made our society far more equal because government is open 24-7. 365 days. Women who have a heavier homework burden, also in Estonian society, they can access the government services whenever the children are asleep. And this has changed totally our societal culture. When the pandemic started, we were able to see that almost half of the jobs which Estonians do could be done from distance. To be honest, I've been talking for more than five years, globally, everywhere, that geography and work are less and less linked. Nobody believed. But now, in the pandemic, everybody saw with their own eyes. But again, for Estonians, it was easier to do, because also our office systems use our safe digital ID ecosystem. So, Going online did not pose additional risks to the data safety of any enterprise, neither public nor private. And yes, indeed, private as well, because of course our digital ID, it's like a passport. You use it in private sector and in public sector. There is no differentiation. You must not have different systems for private and for public if they are digital ID systems. Why? Because you don't have two passports for transactions with government and for transactions with the private sector. Digital ID is simply a modern passport. It is simply something which helps you to act and transact online, but it has all the necessary characters of a passport. 
Sometimes people ask that, how do you then do things? Then a hospital has a digital ID, a police office has a digital ID, a company has a digital ID. No, they don't. Rule management remains exactly like it was in the analog world. A CAO can represent a company, but they can do it with their digital passport, not only with their analog passport. We also use in Estonia the technology which is environmentally friendly because our keyless signature infrastructure, even if it resembles Bitcoin that much that for years people were looking, maybe the one who created Bitcoin and blockchain is really Estonian. They weren't. KSI, our technology, also gives you a signature, encryption and timestamp. But it is environmentally far more friendly. It uses far less energy. And it is extremely important that while we are going through the green turn, we are able also to digitalize our systems in an efficient way. Lots of energy can be saved if you are using correct tools for correct operations. Blockchain is used in Estonian digital ecosystem, but it is used where you really need it. It is when some service adjusts data sets in different systems and needs to do it exactly in the same second. Then we do use blockchain. For example, we have a proactive service where Estonian people do not have to apply because the government knows they are entitled to this service. It is a top-up to our retired people's pension if they live alone. Well, we live in a cold country, heating your house is an expensive thing to do, and therefore we have decided to pay a top-up to pensions of single living pensioners. And they don't have to apply. They don't have to know such a service exists because our data sets will demonstrate they live alone, they are retired, and the top-up automatically arrives on their bank account. You see where you need blockchain in this model. It's an event-based service which involves data sets changing in various databases at the same time. And this is where Estonian e-government model is nowadays moving. Because people ask, why do I have to apply for a service? You know I need a service. Let's come back to the beginning of a life. Baby is born. We have a universal child support system in Estonia. Now, why should parents go and apply for this child support? The state knows there is a baby. The state knows that the parents, well, have bank accounts because they pay taxes. Therefore, the state can logically just start payments to parents. Parents did not need to apply. Technically, this is not a necessity. And we have now about 80 services in our government portfolio, which we call event-based proactive services, which will be offered to people without the demand by the citizen. It is a high trust element in the system because now you are moving to the area where systems do aggregate data from various parts of the government database and draw conclusions about citizens. But since these services are only used helping citizens and the government, well, has strict regulations and rules in place, for example, if they want to go through a criminal investigation to follow people, you have still to get a special order. It is not, I mean, possible to do against the person any investigation in the systems. But to support the person, to pay a top-up to pension, this is possible in Estonia. And these, well, differentiations are extremely, extremely important. Because the only way citizens trust digitally transformed societies is if they know that they are still those who control their own data. And they only allow it to be used to their own benefit. It has to be in legal text. In our case, also this new digital proactive government, we are right now going through uh, uh, work in uh, our ministries and parliament to come to this new agreement, how these proactive services can be used, and also at which point people need to have opt-ins and opt-outs, because some people may not want even these positive services to be offered to them automatically, and they must have an opportunity to therefore opt out. Many people in the world have asked me that, what is the best place to start digitalizing your societies? And many often think it is the digital voting, because many have also big diasporas and they want these part of, uh, of their societies to participate. Well, my suggestion is never start with a high trust service. Start with little services which people can use and see it is safe. 
registering children to school or kindergarten, applying for social support. This is also good to be done on online because then your neighbors do not see that you are applying. And in Estonian society, sometimes you don't want, for example, people to know that you are on social support. So these kind of services should always go first. And I even have a dream. You know, I've been working as UN uh, global advocate for women and children for half a year now. And I've realized that many countries do not have digital population registries. They should have. And they should start by registering online the birth of each and every baby globally. I'm back to where I started, to the end of my presentation. But it is extremely important that globally no birth goes unnoticed. Do you know how many do nowadays? 20%. I see also in developing countries there are governments who are interested in digitalizing their public registries. Some have done so. My dream is that globally every citizen becomes a global digital citizen at the moment when they are born. Then we can offer them vaccinations, food support, education. Then we can be sure that nobody is lost on this planet. And this is my call to all governments globally. Please make this possible, that your future generations could be a true global digital citizens. Yes, it offers great economic opportunities. Yes, we can dream of a global services market People working from Tunisia or from Fiji in Estonian bookkeeping, for example, or, well, writing code to somebody in Iceland. But we should start from really low ambition, getting every child globally registered online, making sure that nobody is lost on this planet. We have catalyzed from Estonia a lot of digital governance thinking globally. We have established e-governance academy together with UNDP I believe we have, we have had a huge influence on European e-governance prowess. But my dream is global. We should all be globally connected but legally protected digital uh, citizens of a global society. Thank you for listening.